Hey, we're live here at Core Christianity getting ready to record our next program. Really excited to be together, yeah. Mike. We got a question actually here uh, from Instagram. Also want to thank you guys who have been giving us your questions. This is from Joy. With the law gospel distinctive in mind, how are we to tell the difference between an exhortation that is moralistic versus an exhortation that is Christ-centered? Mike, what, what even is the law gospel distinction? And how sure. do we tell the difference? Well, uh, we could team tag on this. Uh, the difference between the law and the gospel is fundamental to understanding the Bible and Christianity and our evangelism, just basically everything. The law is everything in the Bible that commands. The gospel is everything in the Bible that promises. That's one easy way to look at it. Uh, even reduce it further, the law says do, the gospel says done. Mm -hmm. uh, God is the one who's accomplished our salvation in Christ. That's why the gospel's an announcement, not a command. So when you, when you go to church, you, you're kind of listening for uh, God's commands driving you to Christ and then when you, you're you coming to Christ, you hear his promise. You go from plight to solution, problem to solution. That is the kind of preaching. And then, of course, you know, in view of God's mercies, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's not the gospel. That's the law again, only it's the law applied to the Christian life. So a, a clear example, you could think of some others here, Adriel. You know you're hearing a moralistic sermon, a confusion of law and gospel, for example, when you hear a what we often call a dare to be a Daniel sermon. Yeah. Um, you know, where instead of Daniel somehow uh, pointing to Christ and his prophecies looking forward to Christ, uh, Daniel's place in the history of redemption being uh, a character in Christ's unfolding drama, he's treated as... A character study, somebody I should emulate. Uh, David, for example, another example. Why would you want to follow David? I mean, don't It'd let your kids grow up to be David. Yeah. yeah, he was in need of salvation. He wasn't a savior, but he pointed forward to his greater son, who is. Mm. I, I think this is another opportunity to also talk about what we sometimes call the imperatives and the indicatives. You know, you have these imperative commands in Scripture. That's do law. It. Yeah, do it. This is what you got to do. The indicatives are the truths, the, the reality of our new identity in Jesus Facts. Christ, what God has accomplished for us. And we want to ground the, the commands, the imperatives, in the indicatives. Because, because we have been loved, because we have been saved, we get to follow the Lord. And, and that's so, how the apostles preach, that's right? right. They, they, right out of, out of the gate at Pentecost, what is Peter doing? He's pre preaching Christ from the Old Testament. Just as in Luke 24, the risen Christ told his disciples... All of the scriptures are about me. And the Pharisees, Jesus said, thought they knew the Bible so well. They were Bible scholars, but they really didn't know the Bible because they didn't realize it, it was about him and they didn't come to him to have life. All of the scriptures lead to Christ and the law commands and the gospel promises. Praise God. Yeah. Hey, well, please get at us with your questions. Yeah. We'd love to, to hear from you via email. Give us a call or Facebook, Instagram, and uh, we look forward to connecting.